Uh, we've been going through a series over the last month called Live Like Kings. And I took this title intentionally because as I was on the internet one day, I saw this Live Like Kings, and it was, um, it was really talking about a whole uh, lavish lifestyle. And I said, what awesome way to understand what Jesus is instructing us to do if we live like kings, to understand that when we live like kings, we may not live in this lavish lifestyle, but we're going to live the way Jesus intended us to live. And he instructed us through the Sermon on the Mount many ways in which challenged me, challenged my heart, challenged me to the core of who I am, to say, all right, there's some things that I need to live differently. There's some things that I need to change if I'm going to live like a king, if I want to live like Jesus. And so today we're going to continue to look through Matthew chapter 5. We're in the Beatitudes for about two more weeks, maybe three. Uh, and uh, we'll be looking again at what it means to live like a king, live like Jesus did. And this series is going to continue. The Sermon on the Mount goes on for two more chapters in Matthew. And so we're going to be looking continually at all of the things that Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount. So this morning is Matthew chapter 5, and we're going to be looking at verse 9. And there's a, the topic this morning is about peacemaking. But as we go through the Sermon on the Mount and we continue to talk through the Sermon on the Mount, there's going to be uh, more instructional points later to come later. So we're starting with this verse 9 in Matthew chapter 5 saying, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. And as we examine <coughs> peacemaking and what it means to be a peacemaker, how we can live practically as a peacemaker, there is further instruction that we'll see later in our sermon series about how we can accomplish this being a person of peace. Uh, but today, let's dive into this beatitude. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. This is a list of how to live like a king. If on one side we see uh, on these Beatitudes a blessing, we can see also that on the other, so on the other hand, if one side is, is a blessing, then on the other hand, it's, it's a judgment that we find. Blessings are only for those who become new. So we've been talking about all these blessings, and, and I'm really excited because I love blessings. I love receiving from God. I, I love getting new things. Uh, we were talking in our missional community, and we had a couple younger kids uh, there on Wednesday, and we asked, you know, what does it mean to be blessed? And they're like, man, it, it means to receive all things. And I'm like, yeah, I like receiving things. But on the, uh, uh, if, we're, if we are, so we are, if we are obedient, it's a key word this morning, we'll talk about. If we are obedient to these instructions that Jesus gives, then it's a blessing for us. If we are disobedient in these instructions that Jesus gives to us, then it becomes a judgment on us. Amen. Blessed are, last week we talked, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Well, if we are not pure in heart, then what does this in, in mean for us? That we will not see God. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Well, if we are merciful, then we have the mercy of God. It's a, it's a blessing for us because He shows us mercy the same as which we show others. But if we do not show mercy, then what does that mean? It's a judgment to us. We will not receive mercy. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. If we aren't sons of God, if we aren't daughters of God, if we aren't in the family of God, then we are outside the family of God. We are outside of His blessing. We are His enemy. These descriptions are the final, uh, the, our descriptions, these instructions this morning from the Beatitudes, they're the description of our final judgment. 
Those who are pure in heart, we're going to see God one day. We'll be face to face with Him. But those who do not have a pure heart will not see the Father. Those who are not ones who make peace with others will not be called the sons, the children, the family of God, the believers. The question for us this morning is, do we live like Jesus? Or do we live in this kingly way? And my hope and my prayer has been that as we examine these words, we take heed to them. We, we take charge to them. We make it as a forefront of our mind that we must go after this, and I'll make this the focus, as we talked about last week, I'll make this the focus of my life, that I will go after living like a king, for this is the path to righteousness. If we want to live like a king, the Beatitudes cry out to us. Get yourself a new heart. Become a new person. The river, the river of judgment, the river of God is, is coming. That final judgment is coming. It's at your door and it cries to us, get right. This is not just a kingly living. This is not a, a far off thing. This is something for us to adapt our life to. And it cries out to us this morning, get a new heart. Get a, renew yourself. Become a new person. Become like Christ. Live like a king. Matthew 5 verse 20, it says this uh, tough statement from Jesus. Your righteousness in verse uh, Matthew 35 verse 20, your righteousness should exceed that of the scribes and the Pharisees. These were religious leaders of the day. Or you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. This is what we're talking about. We're talking about living like kings. This is what we're talking about when we're reading these beatitudes and they sound all rosy and fun. And when we're with the kids on Wednesday night, they're like, yeah, I want to be blessed. Blessed means you get to have everything. You have everything. When your righteousness exceeds the religious leaders, you will enter the kingdom of heaven. You will receive these blessings, not automatically. These are not just automatic blessings that will be called the children of God. It requires us first to be a peacemaker. At the end of the sermon, uh, the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 7, verse 23, Jesus cries out and he says this, Everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand and rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and they beat against that house and it fell as uh, sorry and it fell and great was the fall of it oh this morning wow Andrew why in the middle of this sermon series. Why now are you talking with such uh, vigor and such, uh, such judgment? Why? Because I want you to know these are, these are not just great blessings of, of having the name Christian and, and saying a prayer. No, is this, this is the life that we should live in com continual submitting our lives to the Lordship of Jesus. And in hearing these words about the beatitude, blessed are the peacemaker, we must, I would say strong, with strong words this morning, we must heed to them. We must change who we are. We must desire this new heart. We must desire to be a new person, to live like Jesus and nothing else. In other words, a life of disobedience, the beatitudes, will not stand no matter what we believe. Belief should produce change in us. Yes. Jesus is urging us in his Beatitudes. He's urging us to follow the Beatitudes because it's a pathway to heaven. It's a pathway to righteousness. It's a pathway to blessings. Blessings being that we are made right with the Father. We are in right standing with him. That is first and foremost the blessings of submitting our lives to the Lord. That we will be Standing in a right, and we'll have a right standing between us and the Father. There is a narrow path in which the King walks. And He's inviting us to join in that path, that path of righteousness. So this morning as we examine verse 9, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. It is a blessing for the children 
to be called sons of God. Why? Because they will look like their father. Dad and I look so much, I told Dad here this morning, Dad and I look so much alike that Facebook will continually post Dad in all of my date pictures with Rachel. So we'll take selfies, Rachel and I, and we'll take a picture. And every time, without fail, if I don't click the X, it tags Bob. Bob was at wherever, me and Rachel were. Every time. We look like each other. When I'm, when I'm watching these sermons afterwards, I'm like the expressions I have in my hands and my face, they all look like him. You know, they, and there's things that I say, the things that I do, and, and, and the children, it's a blessing for the children to look like their father. Yes. It's not telling you, it's not telling you in Matthew chapter 5 that this is how we become children. <laughs> This is a, a, a great distinction. So it says that we will be called children of God, but it's not how we become children of God. For that is very clear in the gospel, how we become children of God. In John chapter 1, verse 12, it says this, To all who receive him, that is Jesus, who believed in his name, he gave them the right to become children of God. So we become children of God, we become his sons and daughters, we become heirs with him, we become his family. What? Not because of what we do. We have to remember this, right? We don't become something, our identity doesn't change by what we do. That's the lie that the enemy told uh, Adam and Eve in the garden. You had to eat this fruit first, you had to do something to become like God. So that is not what the what the Beatitude is instructing us. We become sons and daughters of God by first and foremost believing in Jesus. Amen. In Galatians chapter 3, verse 26, it says this, For in Christ Jesus, you are all sons of God through faith. So it's through our faith in Him, through receiving His word, through receiving His forgiveness, we put in faith in the fact that Jesus went to the cross on my behalf and He set me free from all of my sin, all of my unrighteousness, and made me a new person. Then, at that moment that we say yes to you, Lord, in your ways, we become sons and daughters of God. We become children by trusting Christ for forgiveness and our hope. People who have become sons of God, they have the character of the Father. That's the challenge to us this morning. Yes. That's the warning of judgment to come this morning. We have become sons and daughters of God. And so this morning, through Jesus' words, he's instructing us, so act like it. So live like it. Live like the Father. Live in His character. Because God is a peacemaker. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19, it says this, in, in Christ, in the work of Jesus, God was reconciling the world to Himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us this same message of reconciliation, this same peace. What, did, what was the work of Jesus on the cross? But the greatest work of peacemaking ever. The greatest treaty, the greatest dismissal of, of, of enemy, the greatest dismissal of offense was Jesus submitting himself fully to the Father's will, going to the cross on our behalf, dying on our behalf, taking our place, and making for us peace between us and the Father. Amen. And this... It's a work of our Father. This is His character. This is His mode of operation. This is what He does at all times. He seeks to make peace and make reconciliation. In Colossians chapter 1, verse 20, He says this, He reconciled to Himself all things. Colossians 1, 20. He reconciled to Himself all things whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. Even though we were rebels, even though we were enemies, even though as we've said it before and we'll say it again, we were worthless, we were nothing. We God 
sacrificed his own son and declared us free. This peacemaking beatitude is like the climax of the gospel story. It's, it's all there. The moment at the cross, the moment of his resurrection, the conquering of the grave, the conquering of sin, the conquering of death, all of this meets at this point that we are to be peacemakers. Why? Because the Father himself, his mode of operation is to make peace with us, Amen. to show us love, to, to give us grace, to show us mercy. We can be known as his sons and his daughters by being willing to make sacrifice. Being willing to be at peace with others. And no doubt, when we think about this beatitude, blessed are the peacemakers for they will become sons of God or they will be known as sons of God. It comes, it, I recognize that it comes at a cost. The original, greatest ever peacemaking event, Jesus coming to the cross, dying, it came at, a, at an insurmountable cost. And so I know what you're thinking about. We're talking about making peace, and, and we're going to get into a little bit of nitty-gritty and, and talk about grudges and enemies and things of that nature. And, and we think about making peace with those who have, ha, have been your enemies, those that you have to find fault against, those who have offended you. I, I know it, it will come at cost, but trust me in this, that we can live as peacemakers because we have such an example in Christ that He was one and God our Father is one that always makes peace. Even when peace doesn't happen. He makes an effort towards peace even if the results don't work out. about that in Christ many times. That Christ went the extra mile. He went, he lived perfectly, uh, submitted to the Father's will. He went all the way to the point of death. He did it all without a guarantee, even in the face of unacceptance. Yes. I'm going to challenge us as we continue to talk about peace. Making peace, we have to make that the, the mode of operation for us. We're going to make peace. We're going to make effort towards reconciliation at all times, at any cost. Why? Even, even if, and even if, oh, come on, that's hard. Even if the reconciliation isn't possible, yeah. even if they don't accept it, my mode of operation is I'm going to be a peacemaker. I'm going to work towards peace. Challenging, but it's the character of our Father. By God's work of grace, we are born again into the image of our Heavenly Father. 1 John 3, 9. If, 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 we are made into the Father. If He is a peacemaker, then His children, me and you, us in this room, we are to be in that same very nature, peacemakers. How is this possible? By the spirit of peace. By the spirit in which he gives us. Yes. The Holy Spirit in which Jesus said, he's going to come and he's going to lead you and he's going to guide you into all these truths. Me and myself sometimes, come on. Sometimes these grudges, sometimes the defenses, they're real. They're, I carry these. These hurt. But it's by the spirit of peace working through me, the character of God, saying, yes, Lord, I submit hearing another sermon where Pastor Andrew gets to tell me how much I'm not like God. Well, I, I say that only so that you lean into the spirit of God and say, Lord, help me. And if we know anything, we know that the God is a God of grace. And those who call on his name, he will 
help. He will come to. He will rescue. And so in this sermon, when you hear, oh, you know what? you got to be a peacemaker. you got to go make things right. you got to work towards this thing. And you realize, I can't do it. I don't want to do it. Nothing inside of me says this is a good idea, Pastor. You say, Lord, help me. By your spirit, produce this fruit in me. Amen. Produce this fruit in me that I may have the character of my Father. And it will be a blessing to me to be called his child, to be called his son or his daughter. The promise of his sonship pushes us to look at, the, at what Jesus describes as a peacemaker. The promise. I want to be called the sons of God. Let me look at Jesus. What are you talking about? Being a peacemaker. So in Matthew chapter 5, a little bit further along in the Sermon on the Mount, uh, verses 43 and 45, it's a description here of a little bit of what Jesus is getting at when he's talking about being a peacemaker. In Matthew chapter 5, 43 through 45, to, it says this, you have Heard it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. A hard one. So that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. We must be peacemakers to be made known as sons of God. And here in Matthew chapter 5, verse 43, we must love our enemy and pray for those who persecute us. We're going to look at that because persecution comes in, in a beatitude to follow in, in verse 11. But it says here, what, does it, what is this description? Filling out this description of a peacemaker. Loving our enemies... And praying for those who persecute us. I went over the gospel story already in this message, but I'll repeat it again. Jesus loved his enemies, loved us that he was so willing to go even to the to service, even to the point of death. What does love look like? What does loving our enemies look like? It looks like at any cost, I will show you affection. Get to perform at an amazing wedding this afternoon and you get to celebrate love coming together. What is love? It's a willingness to, to think about the other's best at my expense. You guys all have faces in your mind. You're, you're thinking about oh, that, that instant, those people, that, that, that individual. You're like, all right, I don't know. Their greatest at my expense. Love your enemy. Pray for those who persecute you. So first, pray. What should we pray? Jesus begins to instruct the disciples in the Sermon on the Mount of how to pray. So I would say you can adopt this prayer as a prayer model, the Lord's Prayer, you can pray that, that your enemy, that they, would, that they would hallow the name of God. That they would, they, would, they would be in awe of who He is. They would praise His name. You, would, you can pray that the kingdom of God would come to them. That the kingdom of peace, that His healing, that, that, his, that his kingship, that His lordship, that all of the things in heaven, it says, pray that heaven will come on earth, as an earth as it is in heaven. Pray that way for your enemy. And they would receive all that you are, that they would receive all of your goodness. And yes, it comes with judgment too, but I want to encourage you, don't focus on the judgment of God in this moment. As we're praying, we're praying a blessing for them. We're praying that they receive all that God has for them. Pray that God's will comes to their life. God has a will for every single individual in all the world. Amen. Pray that it would come to pass in their lives. 
God, whatever plan you had for them, when you knit them together in their mother's womb, God, I pray that that plan, that perfect plan, would come to pass in their lives. Amen. Pray. Pray for their conversion for their sanctification. Pray that they would come to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior in all purity. Well, Pastor, what if it's a, it is a believer that, that is my enemy? Then pray that they would submit all of their lives to the Lordship of Jesus. The basis of peace is purity, is forgiveness, is this, is this wholeness. So pray that way for your enemy, that they will be made whole in Jesus. And not such a way, God, bring judgment on them and, and, and rain down fire on them. No, Lord, bring them to the saving knowledge of who you are. Verse 47 gets into specific examples of how we can bless, how we can love our enemy. It says, if you greet your brother, what more are you doing than others? If you just greet them, if you just say, hey, and I mean, that's a good American thing, right? Hey, you know, we don't really want to check up on them, but we really don't want people's response. But no, in our enemy, if we, if we hold a grudge against somebody, if we are, are, are have an enemy, don't nurse it. Come on, I, I, I'm guilty of that too in my mind. I get to go all the ways of why they deserve the treatment that I'm giving them, why they deserve the grudge that I have against them, right? Go out of your way to greet them and care for them. Well, that's too hard. It was, it was hard, yeah, but Jesus did it for us, right? It was hard, but Jesus went that extra mile. It was hard. Jesus went all the way to the cross. It was hard. Jesus was beat for us. It was hard. Care for them. Go out of your way to greet them. Peacemaking builds bridges toward people, toward relationships. Our God is a God of perfect relationship. He and Him Himself, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are in perfect unity with one another, sharing perfect love towards one another. And so all of, all of the actions, all of the thoughts, all of the laws of the Lord are all towards us reconciling, us being together. Peacemakers build bridges. Peacemakers want harmony. They desire reconciliation. They desire peace. They desire this thing to be together. This applies in our families, with our spouses, with our children, with our neighbors, with our coworkers, in any sphere of our lives. Run towards harmony. Run towards reconciliation. Pray that whatever steps you need to take, that you would be willing to take those steps towards caring. And it may just start with greeting. Going to that person. Man, when we're in the hallway, instead of turning the other way, instead of crossing the road so you guys don't have to pass, you know, looking the other direction, facing that individual, those people in your life, greeting, going towards. And as I mentioned earlier, don't equate peacemaking, I wrote it this way, with peace achieving. A peacemaker longs for peace and works for peace and sacrifice for peace. Even when attainment of peace may not come. So we work towards peace, we long for peace, we sacrifice towards peace, even when attainment of peace may not come. Yes. In Romans chapter 12, verse 18, it says this, If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all people. Towards all people. Enemies, those hard people, those difficult situations that live in peace. Whatever you can. Do not let it be your fault that peace does not exist. Amen. That's right. Whatever you can, 
Don't allow it to be your fault that peace does not exist. We're going to be like our Heavenly Father at any cost, working towards peace. Because why? When we work towards peace, we will be called His sons and His daughters. Through our belief and through our faith, we enter into the family of God. But it doesn't stop at that moment of faith. Our life in Christ continues. Our life as kings continues. Where every area of our lives falls under the lordship of Jesus. It falls underneath his teaching. It walks like him. It looks like him. And when we look like him and we walk like him, and then the kingdom of God has come. And my encouragement to us this morning that if we desire to live like our King Jesus, if we desire to live like kings, that requires us here in Matthew chapter 5, verse 9, to be peacemakers, to work towards peace. And when we, as the children of God, begin to look like peace and work towards peace, we will be called the sons and daughters of God. This morning, I believe a great response is to take a time of prayer and say, Oh, Holy Spirit, work in me your fruit that I may be one that looks like my Father in heaven who has his character, who lives like King Jesus and makes peace and works towards peace at any cost. Let's pray this morning. Father, I am grateful for the opportunity again to look into your word and to receive from you. This morning again, you challenge our being, you challenge our norm, and you ask us to live like kings, to walk a, along the narrow path of righteousness and to become like you. In Matthew chapter 9 today, we find that, that we are blessed to be peacemakers because we will be called your sons and your daughters. Father, I pray for the ways in which that challenges us as believers today, Father, that we would be able to cry out to you, O oh Lord, help us develop in us your character. Father, I, I look forward as we walk this out in obedience to us being a church who works towards peace at Amen. all costs. God, I pray that as we respond today, Lord, we would respond in obedience to you. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to take a moment this morning to pray. Amy's going to sing a beautiful song, I'm sure. But let's take a moment between us and God to abstain.